Hello folks, this is Matt Pocock and today we're going to be looking at how to design a state machine. And I'm thinking I might make a little series of these videos where we talk from the start to the end of a state machine, work out all of its states that it requires, work out all the events, work out all the actions, and so far what all the concepts that I'm going to be covering I'm going to link to in the description below in terms of documentation that you can read all about. But we're not going to implement them in code, we're just going to talk about how to make good state machines. So the first example I wanted to talk about was a fetch. We're just going to make a network request, save that, and make sure that we can model that kind of in a um, in a full state machine where we can refetch, we can, well, let's see what features we want to add as we go. Now when I'm thinking about a state machine, I think about the possible states that it can be in first. So let's start with the, um, we know we're going to need a pending state somewhere where we've sort of fetched the data. And we're probably going to need like a, I'm imagining like an ERID state as well. My QA brain is sort of popping in. By the way, this is Excalibur that I'm using here. I'm just going to make it nice and big. We've got a pending state. We've got an ERID state. Let's imagine the first possible moment when we go on a page. What's our initial state going to be? Let's imagine that for this fetch query, we want it to always be fetching at the start. So I'm going to use this as the kind of uh, initial state marker. So we start in the pending state. We probably need, once, the, once we receive the data, we're going to need to go to like a uh, has data state. We can maybe refine that later. So, okay, we've got pending state, has data, and then error state. That looks good enough now. So what is going to connect all of these states? How are we going to move and navigate from one state to another? Well, this is where we bring in events. And let's bring in our first event, which is going to connect pending and has data. So let's go from here to here. And this state, or this event rather, is going to be the receive data event. Cool. Next, let's go down here and we'll go from there to error. Okie doke. We've got the receive data state. We probably also need to um, data failed state or fetch failed. Um, okay, that's good. So we've got a pending state, got a has data state, and we've got our error state. Let's imagine that we're designing like a like a hook, like a, a use fetch hook, where you need to occasionally like refetch data as well. What we're going to need to do then is take a line from has data and pending, and we're going to be able to refetch the data. So refetch. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So there we are so far. We probably also need like a retry as well on the error too. So the error state is going to come around like this. God, I love these freaking Excalibur arrows so much. And instead of a refetch, it's going to be a retry. Now, do we want those? Um, the first thing that comes into my mind. Um, well, actually, no. Let's let's save that for a second. Um, Okie doke. The receive data states and fail fetch failed states look good, or these events rather. We've got the retry and the refetch events, which look good. Um, now, so far, we've kind of just constructed a, a map of states and events, and I'm fairly happy with what we've got here. But let's imagine actually implementing some of these. How do we know uh, when we, like, what is it about the pending state that's going to create a, um, uh, create a network request for us? We actually need to make it do something when it's in the pending state. Now, when you need a state machine to do something, and by the way, by sort of do something, I mean like create a side effect, you know, create a, a an effect from this state machine. Like we could just sort of, in a very pure way, move around all of these different states and have these different events and things. But really, we want side effects to spring from our state machine. Um, you may have heard of side effects as like a bad thing, but side effects really are just you know your app doing something. So let's actually, uh, I've been moving around these arrows, but let's actually deck them and put in this kind of uh, box here around pending. And I might do the same for all of our other states to really just mark them out as states. Has data, error, and where's the other one? Oh, that's all of them. Nice. 
Um, so inside the pending state, we're going to have a service. And that service is going to actually make the side effect. Now, when you're thinking about side effects, you can either track them in one of two ways. If they're fire and forget kind of effects, like, uh, you know, let's say console logging something or um, reporting something to the uh, to your uh, error tracking API, for instance, or, you know, showing a toast to the user, then they're fire and forget. You don't actually care about the outcome of them. You don't need to, like, await the ending of them. Whereas if you do care about the outcome, like here we care about the outcome very much because it's either we're going to receive some data or we'll receive a 400 from our REST API or something and we'll need to fail. So here, when you do care about the outcome, it's a service. When you don't care about the outcome, it's an action in most cases. So, okay, so we invoke um, make fetch, and that then is going to while we're in that state, when we receive some data, if I draw that arrow properly, then we go to the has data state. Good. When we're in this state here, then we go back to pending there, and pending uh, fetch failed is going to error like that. Okay, so back to the same as we were, and then errored is going to pull that in there. Okay, again, we're sort of, okay, we've got the side effect of um, making the fetch, but now we also need to, when we receive that data, we need to save it somewhere. And saving things is kind of like, um, you can think of like the data itself as infinite state. What we have here are finite states. We're defining them in all sorts of ways, but the... The data itself could be kind of any shape you can imagine, you know, it could be all sorts of stuff. Um, so we think of that as like infinite state, and that is where it needs to go into context. And context is sort of a state chart, state charty term, but really you could assign that data anyway. You could put it in a use state if you want to, you could save it in the window object if you like. But really we need to save that state somewhere when we receive the data. So when we do receive the data, I'm going to add an action, which is save data. There we go. I'm going to put that on the uh, event itself. So that event, whenever that event is called, then it's going to have the action save data on it. We probably also, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, and fetch failed. We probably need to know why the fetch failed because we're going to need to show like an error message or something. So actions save error message. And we're not going to worry about like uh, the shape of that error message or the shape of that data. That's kind of an implementation detail, but we know that when we receive the fetch failed or receive data state, then, you know, something's gone wrong. Now, if you think about the state of the error message, when we come back from, yeah, errored through retry through pending, we actually don't care about that error message anymore, do we? We do not care about it because we're essentially, you know, just retrying again, we're going to um, make sure that we, or going to basically just try again, let's see what happens. So the previous error message doesn't actually matter that much, so we can clear it from any storage that we've been doing. So, so let's go actions, clear error message. That's in the retry. Um, then on the refetch, I'm thinking about whether we need to clear the data on refetch. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want to keep that data around and um, check it out. I guess it's kind of buyer's choice, isn't it? And that means we should probably cater for both instances. So uh, refetch, what we'll probably have to do is have two types of refetches. This is kind of just me chucking things about. You could do this or you could do this another way. But I like to have refetch and clear cache. Uh, how am I going to do this? Like this, I think. So what this one would do is it would have an action associated with it that would clear actions, clear saved data. Hopefully that's clear for you. Um, so refetch and clear cache and actions clear saved data, whereas the normal refetch uh, wouldn't do that. It just goes boom, we're back in. Um, Okie doke. I think this is looking pretty good got a pending state. Now I guess there's a case to be made um, that you could not want this fetch to happen immediately when the user 
when this machine starts off. Oh, I've lost my little initial thing. Let me mark this as the initial state. Um, so you could potentially have an argument for like being in an idle state first and then going into pending. Um, but ima let's imagine this is just fetching some data and we're starting from the pending state. I think then we can be happy with this. We've got some actions that happen on transitions between states. We've got all our events laid out. We've got our invoke, which is actually making the fetch. And then we've got our fetch failed, which goes to the errored state and goes to the retry. You could use xState for this, or you could use um, uh, you could implement this yourself, kind of uh, in, I'm sure Carl Shevlin has some pretty good blogs on how to manage this, which I'll also link in the description below. But thanks for joining. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, let's see how we get on next time with our next state machine. Cheers.